someone asked me the other day how you could determine through a schedule who is next eligible for overtime. Now, um, if this is a simple um, five, five on and three off day schedule, and I have um, names from the random name generator, and so what I've done is I've put um, their initials here. Now, without any overtime on the sheet here, what you're going to do if I run it, the people initials will be whoever's working the first on who's ever working. Okay, so let's just run this. And so I'm going to go macros and I'm going to go um, overtime. And I'm going to run it. And so, so the first person that's working is always going to be um, who's who's up for the um, for the overtime. Now that's not going to be too fair, considering that the people at the top are always going to get the overtime. So what it's going to be based on is, is I'm basing it on um, who has had overtime most recently, so that they don't you don't have the same person working overtime um, the whole the whole time. So let's put in some overtime here. So let's put in some overtime in here. So let's go um, OV on this one, and let's go um, um, OV on this one, and let's go um, OV on this one. And let's put another one down here. Let's put, uh, how about him, OV. Okay, and now let's see what this does um, when we've had some overtime in here. So I'm going back to my macros and I'm gonna go overtime and run. And so now what it's done is because, um, uh, First of all, it's looking for uh, the first D, and so that's why AL's in here. But um, it didn't put um, HB in here because that's the first one because um, they did overtime yesterday, right? And so now it goes down to SB because they haven't done any overtime. And it goes for the same SB for the next one because he hasn't done any overtime yet either. And so now, um, so let me show you the code how I did this. And so um, the the program's called Overtime. Um, R and C are for rows and columns, and they're long. Z and count are is is also long. Um, and then B C is the string that I'm looking for, which is the overtime. And range is when I'm searching for it. F W S is the worksheet, which is my active worksheet. And so. Um, I say um, column equals three, and for three to thirty-three, which takes covers my month, and I go count as zero right now, and row is r r equals five because that's where we're starting, and so I'm I only have six staff here, but so we're going from five to eleven. Now, the first thing it's looking for is if it's worth they're working. They, I don't care if they're eligible for overtime if they're not, if they're off, right? So if they have to be working. So if they're working, then you go on to the next one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set the range from whatever the current cell is between the first row or the first column on column three and whatever the current cell is, is you're going to look for this over time and you look through the whole thing. Now if it finds nothing, if it finds that they haven't had any overtime and they're going from the top down, it's going to go down to first and first it basically just says take the active, um, put the initials in to the bottom there and then go to the next column. So if they haven't had any overtime, they automatically get the overtime. But if they, um, if they did um, else, Z equals the column where the overtime was. Now, um, we set count to zero, 
And if the column minus Z, so we're trying to find out how many days ago is greater than count, then count equals column minus Z. So worksheet, um, now what it's going to do is um, if the count is, is the highest one, <clears throat> then it's going to do the same thing. It's going to um, put the value, put the, uh, um, put the initials into the overtime line there. Um, and then it's go, going to another row <laughs> that way to make sure that it's getting the highest one or else it's going to go to another row without doing all of the rest here. And so that is how I am determining who is the next available person to have overtime. Please subscribe.